Stone by day, warriors by night. Here's your look at the NECA toys. Gargoyles, Goliath, the ultimate action figure. Frozen in stone by day, flesh and blood winged warriors by night, awakening after a thousand years, a band of powerful gargoyles find themselves transported a time and place not their own, New York City. Here the misunderstood creatures battle modern day barbarians and struggle to understand their strange new world. Gargoyles, the legend begins. Ugh, oh, Alapena. I can't believe it took this long for this guy behind the camera to have a closer look at the NECA Gargoyles figures. Truth be told, it was always a line I wanted to get on board looking at. And funny enough, a rather interesting thing about the Gargoyles is that for a while, Canada wasn't allowed to buy them. No, really, seriously. In fact, if you tried, if you were living in Canada at the time, you tried to order these online. I tried a couple of online sites to get my hands on Goliath here, and it said specifically, will not ship this item to your location. And yet you could still order the other things. It was a very strange circumstance. Needless to say, time has elapsed a lot longer than I wanted it to be. But we're finally going to get a closer look at the Gargoyles Ultimate Figures. Starting, of course, with the leader himself, Goliath. And of course, we're going to take the tape measure just to see how tall the figure stands. I've, for right now, left the wings off. But we will be bringing those in in a moment. Goliath, though, stands about 7 inches in height. Or the figure's 18 centimeters tall. For the figure's accessories, I'm pretty happy with what Goliath gets. First of all, as a reference earlier, the figure comes in clear with a jalapeno pepper. This is something that becomes an ongoing joke in the cartoon series. In fact, they would all often use jalapeno as a reference before they started sentence. Usually more out of frustration or if they were concerned about an incident, they'd say, oh, jalapeno. Anyways, you do get yourself a jalapeno pepper, and it's molded nicely here in green plastic. It looks like the end stem has been painted a darker green than the otherwise green that they've used for the remaining pepper. Uh, there is a hand, I suppose, to hold the pepper. You can take this hand right here, for example, and you very carefully balance the pepper between the thumb and the pointer finger. That option available as well. You can, in fact, use this same hand then for the book. The figure comes included with the book already now opened. You can see as well the scripture on the inside pages. And while it doesn't have the means to flip the pages, I like the idea at least we get ourselves the book. It's bound well as also, well, we flip it around so you can see it. The front, the back, and of course bound in the middle. You can see they've washed an additional bit of black over top of the already nice painted brown that they've used for the, back, the binding of the book. You can then take yourself the hand for Goliath, fit it around the side of the book, and he has the means to hold it that way as well. We are also on the topic of hands. The figure comes included as well with a pair of closed fists. You know, again, if you wanted to use closed fists for displaying your figures, I'm not one for the idea of displaying figures with closed fists, but if that's the that's the right you want to go with, all the power to you. The hands themselves for what we get here are nicely sculpted. You can see that some additional veins are added in, in there as well. And the nails, at least what we see of the thumbnail, is painted in a different color of purple than the otherwise color that they use for the majority of the hands, which is kind of more like a lavender, lavender purple. The figure also comes included with a swappable head sculpt. The head itself, in this case, is the more ferocious looking Goliath. It's going to be not much in the way of comparison until I actually pick the figure up so you can see what default it looks like. Neutral expression head sculpt, which is likely the route I'm going to be going, especially if I'm planning to display the rest of the gargoyles figures with them. I'm going to be likely going with this head sculpt. But there is the more ferocious Goliath head sculpt, if that's something you prefer instead. It gives you also the chance to see some nice... Sharp teeth, top and bottom. And in, in this case, as you can see as well, like the eyes are completely white instead of the pupils that we get on this one. The hair in both the cases is long, so it's going to prevent some articulation when it comes to the figure, especially, and again, we'll get more into that a little later on. But yeah, ro rotating the figure's head around does cause a little more problems simply just because he's got this Fabio-style hairstyle jetting out the back of the figure's body. You may notice, though, while doing it, a couple of holes have now become apparent on the back of the figure's body. Kind of looks, in fact, like a lion's face, doesn't it? Eyes, nose, mouth down below there. That's all you're going to be seeing now. You're welcome. One little bit of assembly I actually did do just before putting on the wings is I did also put on the tail. The tail is very long, but you'll see by the fact it does have <coughs> breathing holes. It's not really breathing holes. It's to guide up the molding of when they cast this. But you can see like there's holes indicating that this is a wire-framed tail, so you can bend it. 
It certainly will then come in handy when you put a lot of the additional back heaviness of the wings on the back of the figure's body. Why am I doing it like this? That's going to cause a little bit of more. Well, it will help to stabilize the figure. One thing also, too, when you get this guy first out of his tray is that the feet aren't quite aligned. They have the feet sort of like this, which is a way that you can display the figure if you want. But to get the full and stabling effect, you may want to have the feet flat. So you've got at least the back heel to help brace some of the supported weight, especially when you put the wings in place. Speaking of wings, here we go. Let's just put the figure down here for a second. Now he gets this option available for wings. These are the fanned out wings. And if you thought to yourself, well, I really would have liked to have the more relaxed wings. Just know that Bronx, a figure that we will be looking at in an upcoming review as well, does have relaxed wings. So if you want to actually have them draped on Goliath's torso, like more a cape, and you don't want necessarily to use these wings, just pick up then Bronx. Bronx will come with those, with those wings instead. One thing I did want to say, though, about the wings is that the plastic that they used is something that really has me worried. The plastic itself, come on in, the plastic itself is, I don't want to say a brittle plastic, but it's the kind of plastic, if you're not too careful, could potentially snap. And these are very large wings to contend with. The wing detailing is really fantastic on these. It looks to be the case that they probably have painted the blue over top of probably a black plastic. And there's a clip on the end of it that then will attach to the back of Goliath's torso. But even like rotating this, oh, I don't even want, even taking this out initially, I would certainly suggest, can you hear that click? That's the click of uncertainty. That's the click of something potentially breaking. If you're having issues similar to this and you go to put the wings on Goliath the first time and you hear it like snaps like this, I would probably suggest the idea of heating this in hot water. I haven't done that and I probably should have as well. But to take those wings, as long as large as they may be, what you're going to do is you're going to spin the figure around to the back here. You're going to lift up the hair as best you can. There's that cat face again. And then you're going to go ahead and take the wings. Now, when you attach the wings, the plugs fit fine and good in there. You just easily slide them in. But then any little time you go to move it, especially if you move it out, can you hear that? It's this uncomfortabling snap and the snap is the joint thank goodness the snap is not plastic breaking no but still a snap that i don't really like to hear and again we're just going to plug the other then wing in just lining up to the hole here provided and now you've got the wings attached on the back of goliath's body the downside unfortunately though with the wings being as high as i've got them right now just bring them down a little bit as best I can get it. It does unfortunately mean that Goliath's head does look down a lot of the times. Just because, again, like his hair is overlapping now the wings that are on the back of the figure's body. And because his head is arched the way it is, you can't bring the head any higher than this. What I might end up doing if I plan to display Goliath looking like you see him right now, I might heat the head in hot water. Maybe not as much this part, but the part on the back of his hair. Just so what I can do is bring the head back and maybe just warp the hair just enough that when I bring the head forward, the hair is going to start to develop its own little natural curve to it, just to kind of help bring the head forward. Because unfortunately, like it is right now, the head's going to be looking a little lower down. And you don't really get the chance to kind of experience how good this head sculpt actually is. One thing I also really like about this is the way they've colored the figure. In the cartoon, it kind of comes across more like he's a grayish purple and maybe not the vibrant lavender purple that we're getting here for the figure treatment. I prefer this color myself. While it may not be 100% show accurate, I think it looks a lot nicer, to be honest, than the more duller gray that we got in the cartoon. Not only additionally adding the purple, but they've also added an airbrushed kind of darker purple in there as well, just to bring out some of the details, like in his arms, his muscles, for example, in his arms, muscle obviously there in his chest also as well. It's a nice color, and I'm happy they chose this one. He does have the loincloth here in the front. It's a softer made kind of rubbery material, and they again, he has the big belt buckle belt there, obviously strapped around the front. It looks like he has to tie this pretty tight also as well to keep the loincloth in place. Spinners around to the back, you can kind of see again like the way that the wings are attached. It looks great if you want to have them in flight pose. The downside though of having a wing wings this size on a figure this big already is that he is going to be taking up a lot more space. Unless you plan to then pick up the other Gargoyles figures, which we will be, of course, looking at. Again, a shameless plug for future videos. We will be looking at those in future videos. But I might just end up either having the fanned or having the relaxed wings that's going to come include with Bronx or if I decide to have the wings fanned like this then I'll probably then take the other smaller gargoyle figures and have them displayed in the front of Goliath here and then still make use of those wings it just means I'm going to take up a lot more real estate space on my shelf for the figure's articulation picking him up again the head is going to be on a ball joint but again with the limitations in place of the way they've sculpted the hair you can move it back and forth but you, you're going to have a real hard time to bring it back 
Again, it doesn't really help either the fact that the wings are as high as they are. Now, again, you can bring the wings down, just carefully bring these down. But obviously one thing that's gonna happen too is the fact that the wings are already taking up a lot of space as they are, to then you're gonna to have to try to overlap them with one another and they're gonna be rubbing against one another like this. You're not gonna be able to get them to move much more than what we've got going right now. Uh, but again, like the head does rotate back and forth also as well. It rolls, it obviously goes further back this way easier than it does up and down. The figure does have an upper torso ball joint so you can hinge it around or hinge it down, hinge it back and hinge it in between. When it comes to the figure's arms, the arms do rotate. Now, with this figure, I've noticed that the arms are very tight on him. I mean, he can move his arms out easily enough at, I would say, just about 45 degrees. Just the sizing of his shoulders means it's going to be causing a little more problems when it comes to getting this guy at 90 degrees. He gets only to about 45, and I, I would have probably advise stopping it there. But the arms do move forward, they do move back, but they're just really tight on this guy. Swivel at the bicep, the figure does possess a double hinge on the elbow and the hands, whatever hands you decide to display them with. I just happen to like the clawing hands myself. Those also rotate all the way around and you can hinge them back and forth. Legs do split out. They're very squeaky though while I'm doing it. You can take the legs and you can move them forward. You can take the legs and move them back. And there's a swivel at the top of the thigh with a single hinge only in the lower knee but at least it rotates back and forth. And at least one thing it does have too is it has tightness. Tight knees is definitely what I would need with a figure this size like this, and especially with this much wingspan behind him. The moment this starts to get loose is the time that this figure is going to have a harder time to stand. The figure's ankles move back and forth this way. You can move them up and down this way. And the figure does have toe articulation as well. He does technically have peg holes on the undersides of his feet. And though while the figure doesn't come include with a display stand, he does have at least the means to stand even if you don't have one. And a lot of that, again, has to do with the fact that they did add the tail on the back of the figure's body. Thank goodness that these gargoyles have tails on the backs of their bodies, because if not, I don't know what NECA would have done when it comes to redesigning these into a plastic figure. The tail definitely does come in handy when it comes to stabilizing this figure. Even you, even you can see right now how the tail does really all the work of keeping this guy upright. I like the look of, of Goliath here. I think he turned out really nice. I'm not really honestly sure whether I will decide to display him with the ferocious head sculpt, or stick with the one that I got with right now. Uh, the coloring is really good on this guy. Even if you could say as a stickler to details, I'm not going to be too much of a stickler to details, but if you were to say, hey, that doesn't look like the way he does in the cartoon. The cartoon is a little more of a darker gray. I say nay, th nay to that. I prefer the violet myself. It makes him pop a lot more when you have him on the shelf. Granted, though, when you have him on the shelf, he is going to be taking a lot more space with the wings, at least, that are provided with the figure as a default. Oh, sure, now. Now you can find yourself Goliath, I'm sure, in Canadian store shelves, or you'd be able to order this guy online, but that was always the case. Oh, no. At the time that I tried to initially order the Ultimate Goliath here, this is, we're talking like a year or so ago, I went online to the sites that were selling it. And these, again, just to keep in mind, these were international sites. I added him, and I added a couple of other things because I was planning to order a whole bunch of stuff at the same time. Goliath, sure enough, was marked in red, and I still remember it now. It said very specifically, we're sorry we cannot ship this specified item to your location. Well, I thought it was maybe just the entire order. So I removed Goliath and sure enough, I was able to order everything else. That happened with two different online sites. And I'm not going to obviously bore you guys with my frustrations with trying to order this guy initially. Now the story would be completely different and I'd be able to probably easily find this guy. A lot of Canadian sites have now started to stalk this guy. And I think, in fact, I even saw this guy at local Toys R Us, but it wasn't always the case. We're going to try to play catch up as best we can here on this channel because I know we're a little behind when it comes to the ultimate gargoyle figures. But again, I did want to start things off with obviously looking at the leader himself, Goliath. Now here in Final Looks, I've got the figure display with his more ferocious face sculpt. And I think that might serve for right now the way I'm going to be displaying the figure. There's always obviously the option of more neutral, gentler looking Goliath. But I kind of like the ferocious Goliath for right now until eventually we start to crack open the rest of the Goliath rest of the uh, gargoyles figures now obviously one thing with this particular figure until you eventually get your hands on bronx is that this figure has permanently the wings spanned out i kind of wish that they could have done something in reverse where they maybe have given the relaxed wings with goliath initially and then fanned out wings maybe with some of the other gargoyles figures i'm sure most collectors will probably want to have this guy displayed with fan wings so i may be the minority for saying that but I think just by the wings taking up as much space as they are, I mean, to be fair, I mean, what am I talking about here, though? The wings do look pretty good on Goliath with the way that they are right now. But I do like, I like that at least they gave you the option that if you are as frustrated as a collector like myself, where maybe you might say to yourself, you know, listen, I, I would be on board to get a Goliath. 
but I honestly just don't have the space for something this big. Then at least NECA took the time to throw in some extra accessories. Not found though with Goliath, but found with another figure I'm probably sure you're going to be getting anyways with Bronx. Overall, a nice looking figure. I'm a little uh, iffy when it comes to the way that the wings move. More importantly, by the way that the hinge joints snap every single time you move them. Snapping is not something as, as sound-wise you really want to be hearing when it deals with a plastic figure, especially with wings like this. But it does snap a little bit, so if you're having that same similar snap and you're worried by the snapping, maybe you want to heat this up a little bit with hot water before you start to move the wings around. All in all, though, great-looking figure, and I can't believe, again, Jalapeno. I can't believe I waited as long as I did to have a look at this line. So sorry, so sorry for anybody that's been waiting for the guy behind the camera myself to have a look at this line. Rest assured, we will be playing catch-up with some upcoming reviews for the Gargoyles figures. What do you guys think of this figure? Let me know down below in the comment section. Have you had the chance to pick up uh, Goliath for yourself? And maybe if you've had a similar story like myself where you wanted to get a collectible, you tried to order it online, and then the online site that you tried to order it from specifically said, I'm sorry, we can't deliver to your lo your location. Not just talking a site that just won't ship to you at, at all, but a site that specifically said, we can't ship that specific figure just by where it has to go to. Have you ever had a similar circumstance like that? Let me know down below in the comment section. Also, as well, if you guys enjoyed this video, why hit with a like? If you guys are loving the content you guys are seeing and on board to finally see some Gargoyle reviews, took this guy long enough, have a look at some Gargoyle reviews here on this channel. Make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and that you're also turning on the bell notification. Going to be a lot more videos coming your way, guys, Gargoyles and otherwise. So as always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.